Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Present. Welcome to the family. We chose this one. This episode 377, Life in the Fast Lane, number 34. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe, too. And Joe, this is finally, finally, finally our end, our button on Too Fast, Too Furious. We have done every minute of the movie. We did the credits. We have. We did the deleted scenes. We did the extended scenes. We did the spitting and the kicking. And now... Yeah, those extended scenes weren't very no. extended. No. And they're not even there. Oh, I thought you were going to say not even good, but also not very extended. But yes. Not very extended. Nothing about that was very extended. But yeah, also, like, that's the thing. We talked about it last week, the Randy cut. Or what we talked about doing the Randy cut. But, like, when I was watching this time, I'm just like, no, there's still a lot of them kicking Enrique. Like, it's not like they cut out a lot. They just kicked out, like, a kick or two. Yeah. What we're going to do here in the minute portion is there are three trailers. I've had. I don't know if these are going to be good. I don't fully. I know what one of these is. The third okay. one we're going to do is the Legacy trailer, which when Fast 10 was coming out, they put out different trailers for each movie. I remember this. We watched a couple of them. But we're going to watch it. three trailers. The first one is Too Fast, Too Furious, official trailer number one, 2003 HD. This is posted by Movie Clips. Not Movie Clips Classic, just Movie Clips. Okay. I think this is the, the theatrical trailer, which I'm Seems sure we it. saw back in some lap but are you ready to watch it again here i'm hoping there's something in the trailer that's like not in the movie that now that we know the movie intimately we'll be like that's on the movie i doubt it i doubt it too we're, we're gonna see just like the spitting of tyrese on i hope so all right Enrique. are you ready to watch this first trailer i'm ready when you are bud three two one play and the fun thing about me putting the audio of these trailers in the episode is that youtube's gonna be like you can post it but you can't make any money on it it's like that's fine we are we're not gonna make the four cents on this trailer anyway it's fine yeah. All right, all right, all right. Fire okay. It's time. It's time for the week to go home. So, this seems like a Fast and Furious trailer so far. Yeah. I, the, the thing that's a little surprising to me is the text on screen is the too fast text, but the behind it is, like, red in a way that, like, I don't think red when I think too fast. You know what I mean? Like, I think neons and blue and nighttime, not necessarily red, but it kind of works. Yeah. He got that from me. Steer and drive in the trailer, important. Shirtless Tyrese, also important. These are some iconic images from the trailer. I mean, there's nothing. There are. It actually makes it seem like more actiony, more wacky than it is, somehow. Not to 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 sort of change the subject off this trailer, but you saw the first movie in theaters, right? No. No. Oh. No, Too Fast we did see in theaters. Do you remember seeing this trailer before having seen Too Fast in theaters? I'm not really, but I'm sure I did. Okay. Like I don't I don't have like any feelings about like I'm not like, "Oh yeah, I saw this and then I wanted to go see the movie." It was like I'm sure that that's what happened, but I don't remember that. See the trailer again at Yahoo Movies. Ooh. Okay. Wow. So that was the first trailer. Okay, it was a trailer. It's a trailer. It was for Too Fast. Yep. Okay, the second trailer we're watching is too fast too furious trailer he this is posted nine years ago so not for i don't know what just some like in the middle of no time whatever just posted nine years ago it was probably one of like the box sets got released or something you know what i mean like a seven disc set or something whatever the description is posted in 2014 who knows it's after six but before seven so okay one minute five seconds are you ready I'm ready when you are. Three, boy. two, one, play. The new model. Oh, it's using the same things. This is just like a truncated version yeah. of the last one. Like yeah, exact same image. Because the last one. I mean, was not like, that it's a different movie or anything, no, but no. it's even the same order, everything. Right. He did the stare and drive on you, didn't he? He got that from me. Even the last video is like a minute 59. The trailer's only a minute 20. This is a minute 5. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same. It's just like, yep. they probably have like one or two things cut out. No, the yeah, they just, they just trimmed it down, but it's literally spot for spot. I was made for this, bro. They did a good job with these trailers. I'd be hyped for this if I had never seen this movie. 
This looks like a lot of fun. Oh, ejecto cedo cuz into a guy skipping across the water. Pretty That's good. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Sure. And we show the guy in the Mustang dying in the trailer. In twice. both trailers. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which is the thing, truly, we don't talk enough about. All right. Then this is the newer one. They recut this, we're leading up to Fast 10. Too Fast, Too Furious Legacy trailer posted by The Fast Saga. Actually, the last one, oh, the last one was also posted by The Fast Saga. So I'm guessing that's like when that YouTube account might have launched. Sure. They're like, that let's makes sense. have all the trailers here. Okay. One minute, one second. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, play. All right, all right, so far, there's right, nothing right, new or really noteworthy about either new, of the trailers. Nothing, anything different between the trailers. Nice close up of their Asuki. Okay, this is like a okay. more stylized. Yeah. And for only being a minute long to spend the first third of it in that opening race is like, okay. A little bit of uh, TGNT there. Mm-hmm. Felt like. Same lines. Yes. Again. I think this is a better trailer if you've seen the movie and love the franchise. I think the other Agreed. one, if you don't know anything about these movies, the other one is a, a better sale yeah. for a movie. Yep. Agreed. But yeah, this is also like, hey, remember all those things? Like, here's reminding you of what Too Fast is before you see Fast 10 in eight days, right? So. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty funny that they were all kind of the same thing, though. I like that. I am so like, excited to start Tokyo Drift. Same. I really am, too. I'm really excited. So we'll, we'll talk about Too Fast in, you know, a month or two, because that's the, the format of the show. Is there anything else you want to say before we officially move on from Too Fast in the minute format? I'm glad that we covered it like that. And I have a different view on Too Fast now than I did before. Um, I like it. I think it's fun. I understand its place in the franchise. And I think that it actually does a lot of good. So I'm a fan of Too Fast and I will still be a fan of Too Fast. Yeah. I still, I, we talked about this recently, I think on maybe the last Fast Lane. I feel, I still feel like I don't know the second movie as much as the first movie. And 100%. I, I thought that was because of the pacing, but also maybe less iconic. But I'm curious to see, Tokyo Drift is going to be such an onslaught of everything after how slow, and I mean, like, Tokyo Drift is going to have some slow, so, like, minutes and stuff like that. But I think after how slow a lot of the back half or the middle half or whatever of Too Fast was, is whatever... I think Tokyo is just going to be like an assault on our senses in terms of things to write and outfits and songs and signs and whatever. I think it's going right? to have, I think it's going to have peaks and valleys for sure though. Cause there's like, like just from memory, you know, like, yeah, I guess like even like Mila and Sean sitting in the like vending machine thing is going to be interesting, but there's a lot of like moments of like Han and him talking, you know? Definitely. So I think there's there's gonna def but like the parts that are gonna be like there's a bajillion things in the background are gonna have a super bajillion things in the background. So yes, I'm curious to see like you know you're you're doing signs. There's gonna be a lot of signs in Japanese. You're gonna have like Google Translate on your phone like lens hold up to the TV like oh this actually says sushi. I mean I can, but at the same time they usually write it in English too. So that's true. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. They they do write English on all their signs. Well, we'll do the first Life in the Fast Lane for Tokyo Drift on November 12th in the main feed, November 8th for the Patreon. So just about a month away, we will be doing Life in the Fast Lane number 35, Tokyo Drift, minute one. I'm very excited for that. But that's officially a button on Too Fast, Too Furious. Now, Joe, on the streets, news about the Fast and Furious. I have five things, a couple that I've pulled from the Discord, but is there anything you've seen in the last few weeks, news about the Fast and Furious. Uh, it's not really news, but I've seen an onslaught of Terra Mana tequila commercials with The Rock in them. Oh, uh, like he's pushing yeah. it himself. Yes. Okay. Oh, and mm -hmm. I saw a commercial from The Rock for fucking Red Notice or whatever the name of that movie is. Red, Red Alert. Red, Red One. One. Mm -hmm. So I saw The Rock all over my TV this weekend promoting things that we will eventually get around to. That guy loves selling. He loves, he does love selling. I did not realize until like this past week that 1800 tequila is like Kendall Jenner's tequila. I've seen that so many, I just, I didn't know that it was like a celebrity tequila. 
I just thought that was is just it really? Like, to, I, she's not like the main owner of it, is she? I don't know. Hold I on. think she's like a part of it. Like that's not like it's not like Casamigos or something. Oh no 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 no! Not eighteen hundred. She has eight one eight. What I heard was wrong. Okay, the yeah. Because I was like eighteen hundred tequila. Eighteen hundred. Like, that's what I thought. Because I was just like, Whoa, it's like but, yeah. super famous. Eight one eight was founded by Kendall in twenty twenty one. But still, like that's. That, I mean, I don't drink booze, but like I've seen that bottle every. You know what I mean? Like Terramana, I've seen Aviation Gin, I've seen the rest. But eight one eight. All right. I've never seen eight one eight before. So, are you surprised? Sense. On that note, we've not that. gotten any Kardashian in these movies. No. But, like, they've been I, I do, around I'm not, for 20 years. This has I been understand. around for 25 years. And they've never even, like, a cameo crossover? My thought is, if there was going to be one, it was going to be the girl that Tyrese sings Happy Birthday to in the Dubai one. Mm-hmm. That he's like, oh, Jasmine. Like, if there was a time that they would have put a Kardashian in there, it would have been Kim there. I'm just thinking, like, you know, when they get to the house in nine... And like Cardi B's outside, like Kim or somebody could be there. Chloe could be there. Kim, like anybody, it just like feels like. I'm gonna tell you my theory on this because I think you have enough. a good point. Okay, I think that simultaneously, both the Kardashians and Vin think that the other one is below them. Below them. Mm-hmm. So that Vin is like, I wouldn't ruin my movie by putting one of these talentless Kardashians in it. And the Kardashians are like, we are way too famous to be in one of those shitty Fast and the Furious movies with Vin Diesel. When realistically, it's a perfect they're the fit. same. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's exact. Yeah. So, but that's my theory on why that 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 that's playing out like that. If I had to guess, like Chris Kardashian's like, this would do nothing for our brand. We're already known to all these people, you know. And you're like, okay, but yeah. I think, I mean, it also feels like, it's like the office meme where it's like, they're the same picture. It's just like... They're the same picture. 100% they're the same Kim, picture. It's just like, they're the same. It's like, they're both... Yes. Very good at what they do, and also kind of maybe a little oblivious, and also like, kind of liked and disliked by the same people. Yes, exactly. You know. But I don't think that there's anything that, like, they have, like, beef or anything, right? But, like, I do feel like he he's just like, that's not for us. And they're like, that's not for us. Okay, so here's some news that I have. Number one. Okay. Not really about the Fast and Furious, because I don't think she's ever coming back, but in the Discord, people said she's coming back. But Anna Sawai, L. Lou, Han's adopted little sister, yes, won an Emmy for Shogun. For the, she became the first Asian performer to win an Emmy for Lead Drama Actress. So shout out to Anna Sawai. She's shout also with Pachinko on Apple TV+, Plus, but she's like definitely on the rise. What is Pachinko? Because that sounds interesting. Pachinko is based on a book. I think it's a... I haven't seen it yet. It's very, okay. very good. I think it's also kind of somber or heavy, but it's two seasons out now. I think they're both okay. like six or seven episodes, but it was very, really well regarded. But like I saw a thing that like she was in at least some of that, but there was like an interview with her talking about both Shogun and Pachinko. Makes sense. And I didn't read it because I haven't seen those. I want to see both those, but I haven't seen either of those. And I was just like, control F, fast, furious. No. Okay. So she's just not. Okay. Nope. Nobody's asking her. She's not talking about it. That's fine. But shout out to her. John Cena speaking of F9, to star in Matchbox movie from Sam Hargrave, Skydance, Mattel Films, and Apple. That's interesting considering they're playing the Hot Wheels game in FX. Mm-hmm. So this is another Apple original films, and Apple also just announced that they're basically just not going to put movies in theaters anymore. They're just like, we're going to just show them on our thing. Like the new movie, I don't even know if you heard of it, but Clooney and Pitt are in a new movie called Wolves, which we're recording this a little bit early, but I think Clooney I and Pitt are in a movie called Wolves. It. It's out on Apple TV Plus. Nobody's talking about it. But it's I saw like, those a trailer are... for it uh, in theaters like months ago, maybe. So it was that's in, weird. They, they had like a three day stint in some theaters, and now it's just on. Well, Apple they're going to do Plus. the thing that's like they have to hit the requirements to be an Oscar nominee possibility, and then they're just going to put it on their streaming service. That's probably yeah. like the end of theaters, right? Like that has to be like. I mean, pretty much. My friends are all like. I wish these movies were in theaters. It's like, well, I get that, but like, I'm just glad they exist at all. Like, if it's if it's like, I want wolves in theaters. It's like, no, I'd rather have wolves on Apple if it's good. If it's good on Apple TV Plus, than no wolves. Like, if Apple's got a trillion dollars to spend on movies, it's like, and they don't want to spend the like whatever sure. amount of money to like put it in theaters and like lose money there. Then yeah, yeah. fuck yep. it. Who mm-hmm. cares? I'm with you. That's a good. That's a good idea on that. I like that. 
there's a very funny line in this deadline thing. The movie inspired by Mattel's iconic real world diecast toy vehicle line. It's like, yeah, we know what Mattel is. Like, we or we know what Mattel is. We know what Matchbox is. Is this is, is this an offshoot of Barbie? By the way, I forgot that it was Mattel. So that kind of tracks. Well, when Barbie was a success, they said we they're like, we're going to start like, the Mattel. MCU. The Lena Mattel. Dunham is doing Polly Pocket, which I think went away. It was like somebody's doing Hungry Hungry Hippos, which might have gone away. It's like or Jordan Peele's. It's just like you're just like throwing things. I mean, sure, whatever. But I think this that's is one of those. That's spaghetti at like, a wall. I 100 yeah. percent agree with you. That's spaghetti at a wall. You're just like okay, sure. But also, if you're gonna do toys, cars make sense because they just cars like, oh, the car make movie. sense. And you put John Cena in it, and you get like one other person from the Fast and the Furious, and they just yep. pretend like it's fast. We do the fucking thing that we did in spy, not Spy Racers, but the other one. Um, like. What is it like? Uh, Ready Player One or whatever. What, what was the movie we watched? It was like half a video. It was like she was playing Gal Gadot was just playing that she was oh. just like playing Gal and like one of. Oh no this? no no! It was Wreck It Ralph Two. Ralph Breaks. Wreck It Ralph Two. That's yeah. what it was. Yes. So you do yes. like that with this movie essentially. Yes. Yep. Another new project announced is a RoboCop TV series at Amazon with James Wan producing. So we covered RoboCop and James Wan, obviously director of Fury Seven. Yeah. I don't need this, but sure. I mean, they're they're out of ideas, Joey. We've I know. That. I know. <laughs> they ran out of ideas. There's no more ideas. This might have been from the Discord. I don't remember. Sean Evans recalls trying to get The Rock on Hot Ones. The WWE star wanted to- this food instead of chicken. And he's like, instead of that, can we do... It was something really weird. I remember Grilled this. salmon strips. Yes. What the fuck is wrong with you, Rock? Sean Evans was talking to Bloomberg about this. And he's like, in my head, I was like, that had to come from his mouth. That's as close as we've gotten. And then it fell through. Hey, I know your thing is about eating chicken wings, hot wings, and I know that like sometimes you'll do like vegan, vegan wings. Yeah, but yeah. It's still the same thing, but can you do like grilled salmon? No. Yeah. And he was like, okay, yeah, I'll do hot ones, but it's going to be sliders, right? And they're like, what? It's dumb. I just think salmon is a dumb choice anyway. It's like, who eats like super spicy salmon? It's also just like... Just go on your cheat day. Schedule on your cheat day. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm thinking, too. It's not like he's, like, he's like Tom Brady, and they're like, eat a strawberry. You know what I mean? This is The Rock. Like, we've seen him eat ice cream sandwiches with cookies as the sandwich, right? Yes. Like, yes. And giant-ass stacks of... Like, you've eaten this food before. Don't act like you're above chicken wings, motherfucker. Like, right. Okay. Yes. Weird news. Good job. The final news, not really about Fast and Furious, but Joe, are you ready for movie tickets to get even more expensive? <laughs> yeah, why? How? Is there good So this is the thing facts? I saw, and I thought this originally, and or like instantly, and then Damn Walt, it. and then Kamala. Walt posted this, and this I... Is, this, is, this is Biden's fault, isn't it? Bidenflation. And then I post, Walt put this in his newsletter, and I commented on it while we were watching the Randy Cut. He's like, aren't you like watching like 14 hours, of, or are you like 14 hours deep? I'm like, yeah, but I'm thinking about this. Theater owners plan to spend $2.2 billion dollars to modernize and upgrade the movie-going experience. They're like, oh, movie theaters are back. Let's make them nicer. But I'm just like, if they spend $2 billion, and this is like AMC, this is Regal, this is like the, like the five price Cinemark, like the big theater chains, right? Yeah, like yeah, these yeah. Are all, They're all like, we're going to spend money. They're not going to do this out of the goodness of their hearts. No, you're just going to be able to get more D-Box seats like I got. You're going to get Jigglers, Ash Jiggler seats in your theater. AMC, Regal, Cinemark, Cineplex, Marcus Theaters, Corp, B&B Theaters, Harkins Theaters, and Santico's Entertainment. But it's like, okay, so like around here, a movie ticket's already $16, so it's going to be like a $19 Same? ticket? Yeah, 100%. So movie theaters are back. They're going to make them even nicer. They, they talk about like doing like zip lines and stuff. I'm like, I don't know, whatever. But no, I don't need zip lines. I need you to make the fucking seats work and like it to be clean. That's all I really need. Like, just make sure, sh- first of all, make sure every theater now has recliner bench seats, please. We'll talk about in, in extracurriculars, but I went to the, an IMAX theater that I haven't been to in a while and like they didn't add recliners, but they added what they, like I saw on the app was like, plush rockers and i'm like that seems like a bullshit way to describe like the shitty seats you have but i'm like oh no they put new seats in and they're like better but they're not like great but like if you paid the money to have these seats like those seats are gonna be there for years like that's the that's the up that's okay. your upgrade yeah um that's what i'm saying like if you want to spend two billion dollars and they're like every seat is reserved and a recliner and has like mm-hmm. the thing yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's worth an extra three dollars a ticket to me. Although you already did it at mine, and you're still going to charge me the extra three dollars. I mean, the I thing is, it. like, you just like by this point, it's like if you go to AMC, you get AMC A list. If you go to Regal, you get the clown, you get the crown card. Cinemark, you know I mean? like, it's the same Cinemark thing. Cinemark right? for me. Yep, I'm in the inner circle or whatever stupid shit they call. Movie Pass still not really worth it, but I was grandfathered into the lower rate. That's still, you know, just 
if you're going to like more than one movie a month, it's like you got to figure out a way to save money because they're like 20 bucks each. So whatever. Yep. Anyway, that's all the news. If you get news, share it on Discord. Discord's always fun to, to grab news from. It is. And you guys are great. You guys do a good job. Thanks for pointing stuff out for us. And just bullshitting in general. I like you guys. It's also just, you know, like it doesn't have to be like real news. It could be like, you know, things adjacent to the franchise. Not just like everything The Rock does because like he does a lot. But, you know, if he's in a new movie that's like Fast and Furious-ish, sure. Speaking yeah. of him, before we go to the Running the Vin, because I'm going to go Running the Vin next. But while well, we're just talking about him, is Dwayne Johnson interqual? Not that I think. I don't know. We are going to run the Vin now, now, and Vin, I think, has been very active. On oh, Instagram. fun, fun, fun. I okay, think. good, 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 good. I see maybe at least five. Wait, so when was the last? We recorded the last one on 9-11. Oh, yeah, because he posted on August 29th. I'll share my screen now. But he posted on, on August 29th this picture of him in the black tank. And we're like, what is this logo, right? Remember this? Yeah, yeah, we were trying to figure it. It's like VZN, VZX. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, what, mm-hmm. what is it? And so he didn't post again until, you know, we, we recorded on 9-11, and he didn't record post by then. But then the next day, on 9-12, he posts this long thing. This was edited. I think I might have screenshotted this. Hold on, because I'm like, this is a lot of text for him to not leave unedited. So let me see if I actually still have this. Hold on. I hope he calls out a world leader in it, and then he had to delete it again. Well, it's him and Paul, right, Pablo, looking back... A quarter century ago. This is him and Paul Walker. What would you say? Circle like 2000. Because he's thin. Paul's like young. This is like 2001. 2001 2002, the, yeah, this yeah. is this is them running promo for the first one somehow. Okay. I Red do carpet. Have, I do have uh, this screenshot that I took on the day he put this. Looking back a quarter century ago, I believe this was the moment we knew that our brotherhood was going to change Hollywood. That you and I meant something to the world. Dot, dot, dot. A multicultural brotherhood bond not by blood, but by love, dot, dot, dot. To think I just saw concept art for the next chapter. Brian, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I will have to brace myself for this next film, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that me- that seems like he's saying that Brian is going to be a part of the movie. I have to, Brian, I have to, rep- I have to brace myself for this next film after I see the concept art. But he's talking like it's a picture of him and Paul, and he says like you know the next thing is I saw your mother and father this summer, but like let's keep why going. Is he yeah, Brian, it. right? I don't know. No, okay. I, I think he's saying I think he's saying Brian because he thinks that in the concept art for the next film he sees scenes okay, with maybe. Brian in it, and he's like I'm gonna need to brace myself for the emotional toll it's gonna take. I saw your mother and father this summer. I could feel you in their loving embrace. Dot dot dot. For the last eleven years, I have held words like talismans of light. Each have gifted me so much with their love and wisdom. That should be the name of the episode. Talismans of Light? Words like Talismans of Light? <laughs> that, it's, a, it's an early front runner for think me. Think about it. Just think about it. Yeah. Talismans of Light. I like that. That's fucking weird. Okay, go ahead. And your daughter. My God, she's actually continuing your good works. Speaking on behalf of our oceans. Just weeks ago at a birthday dinner, dot, dot, dot. Meadow gave a toast. Man, you would have been so damn proud. This is actually beautiful. She has a way really of speaking cute. from her heart that echoes the melody of grace so beautifully. What does that mean? It's just words, but and they're good. It's poetic, but it doesn't mean... Okay. Traveling to the corners of the world, dot, dot, dot. There's always someone there to remind me of the impact we've had on their lives. Either showing their cars with pride, haha, dot, dot, dot. Or simply saying they feel like they were raised by us. That beautiful brotherhood, a quarter century old. That's a weird sentiment because I never see Paul Walker and Vin Diesel as father figures. Okay. Because of the age that we were kind of introduced to this at. They seem like older brothers, right? Like they're like cool older brothers that like hang out. I can see that. Yeah, but like that's that feels weird. That's like raised by us. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, they're like we grew up with Fast and the Furious, raised by us. Yeah. But I don't. I think Vin is seeing himself very fatherly, although it's maybe not fatherly. Go ahead. I think it's also you know by this point he's literally a father, right? Like he's like he is. But Meadows there. I get it. Yeah. A brotherhood, timeless and bond by love. For that I am eternally grateful. Dot dot dot. But damn, I miss you, Pablo. Happy birthday. Dot, dot, dot. That's sad. That was very, very cute. It's cute to know that he and Meadow, like, as much as he says it all the time, like, him being like, I was at a birthday dinner with Meadow the other week. Like, that's cool. 
Yep. Hold on, I'm going to check here. I'm, I'm checking the difference checker to see what he edited, because I can't tell him edit. I'm, I can't I'm tell always either. curious what he edited. It would really be like a psyop if he was, like, not actually editing. That'd be pretty funny. No, it's the same. Finn. Weird. Weird. Okay. Because it didn't say edited when I got it. Okay. Might be, like, weird formatting, like an extra delete of a set, you know, like a period or something. Who knows? Okay, whatever. Oh, well, happy birthday, Paul Walker. Happy Mr. birthday, Pablo. Pablo. Next picture, him in the back of a pickup truck with a bunch of dudes. Him flexing, everybody else just sort of smiling, laughing, looking like you're having a good time. Oh, yeah. Vin on September 16th says, lead with love, happy creative, dot, dot, dot. Happy creative is so top tier. Lead with it's love. It's his thing. Yeah, I like it. Next picture. It's a video. Authenticity is everything. Dot, dot, dot. Hashtag happy Toretto Tuesday. He used to do happy hashtag Toretto Tuesday. Now he's doing hashtag happy Toretto Tuesday. So this is him. That's an interesting choice. Okay. And Michelle Rodriguez eating ice Sitting cream. Sitting at a like. fireplace. And it looks like they're about to eat an ice. They're about to eat a Magnum ice cream bar. Okay. Mm. Wait. He's wearing a shirt that says Furian. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You've had these things in your fridge for the last 20 years? <laughs> Every Super Bowl, they always ask for me to do a Super Bowl commercial. What? They come with every product in the world. And, um, and if it's not my refrigerator. <laughs> what? What does this mean? I don't know, man. I have an astute observation that I need to address with you, Joey. It's not, if it's not in my refrigerator, it won't be on the Super Bowl. <laughs> what is... They're oh, high as shit. Those two are stoned no. as fuck. Authenticity is everything. Authenticity is everything. <laughs> what the fuck I is... I know that about you. I know that about you, she says. Oh, the, 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 the comment here, my guy Vin is lit, lol. He's so high. He's so stoned in this video. Um... The thing I want to you to notice is that there's already a bite taken out on Vin's at the bottom of it, like a fucking savage. Do you think he took a bite or it just like flaked off when he tried to unwrap it? I don't know. Yeah, okay. like also, like Michelle doesn't have the, the wrapper hers. He's got his on, you know. And it's like it's like they were making a commercial for these, but they didn't say what the product was because they're not getting paid. And she's high as shit because they're just like housing this ice cream. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So they're sitting around smoking weed. Happy Toretto Tuesday. Happy Toretto Tuesday. Next one. Edited. Don't know the original one. It's a very very close up of Riddick. Yeah. What these fury and eyes have seen. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, that one's good, too. And the final one from one week ago. Well, actually, two weeks ago. September 18th. Another picture of him is Riddick. The Riddick universe is expanding. Dot, dot, dot. So cool. Period. Inspired. Period. What? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Vin. Thanks, Vin. Running the Vin. We ran the Vin. A lot of Furian content, man. A lot of Furian content. I don't know why this shirt, the Furian shirt, looks like a Cybertruck logo or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he choose he chose a very futuristic font for it and then just looks like a tesla product if you see i mean it's 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 the, it's the nicest post he's had in a while but the, the paul walker birthday one has 2.2 million likes him in the truck is 350,000. them eating ice cream is 600,000. the close-up eyes 176 and then him you know middle close-up of riddick 288 like people want fast and furious people don't want riddick i feel like Vin wants Riddick. We've talked about this. Vin wants Riddick. This feels like people being like, if this is what it takes to get for more you to Fast and Furious. The fuck down and make Furious 11 and get us off that damn bridge. That happy damn Fury damn. Friday. Yeah. Happy creative. 
Joe, we have a Patreon page, too fast, too forever.com. Shout out to Cassie Wilson, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleinman, and Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Ooh. Party. Wes Hampton, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden, Renato Di Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, Tom Price, Mike Gallagher, Josh Buckley of Whole Lot of Wolves, Michael Moser, Christian Larson, Tara New One, Aaron Willows, and Natalie Absolute, Randy Carter, Josh Goularm, and Jessica Collins, aka Mon. Mon. Tez. Thank you all for supporting the $5 a month level or above. Bonus episode out today as we're recording of They Live. We've got two more bonus episodes coming out this lap and then a bunch next lap. Plenty more. That's the main big perk. Early X, other episodes. Undying Love and Affection, handwritten notes, stickers. Too fast, too forever.com. But we also have an email address if you would prefer. Family at cageclub.me and Joe. I told you we've got a bunch of YouTube comments. We have five YouTube comments. A handful of emails and some other stuff. So first Get to off, it, motor mouth. This is a new one. This is not one that people normally comment on. Okay. The world's fastest Indian. Do you remember that one with yeah. Anthony Hopkins? Yeah, yeah, where he's the car in the desert, salt mm-hmm. flats. Yep. Chase, K-E-I-N-G, Chase Keying, 2409, says rubbish, trash can emoji. Nice. That's good. Mm-hmm. Can you just reply... Uh, don't forget to recycle okay thank you next comment on fast and furious tokyo drift the high school slumber party episode we put on our feed paul abuhani heart emoji good hey there we hey one up one up 75 down Mm -hmm. okay that's good we're off to a good start here then something must have happened because okay friday sunday sunday we got three comments, two from the same person, on Vanishing Point. I mean, of course, it's Vanishing Point. That's not surprising. But, like, I wonder if it was shared somewhere. Although, I don't know who would have shared. I mean, I guess if it was shared somewhere, it would have been shared before people watched it. Like, oh, yo, Vanishing Point's on YouTube. Yes. Stephen Bark, 3630, which I just love. I, just, I mean, there's a picture of a man here, but I'm just assuming it's a dog. He simply comments, bullshit. <laughs> Yes. Then two days later, or really like a day and a half later, he comes it's back. He, he's still thinking no, 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 about no, no, our no. bullshit. Okay. Different, different guy. Okay. Russell Phyllis, 6864, 150 a.m. I mean, this is Eastern time. Who knows where he lives? Russell Phyllis says, Your commentary is so not right. Crying emoji. And then two minutes later, he comments again, Who are you? Period. Dot, dot, dot. No, all wrong. Crying emoji shit (laughs) okay like all wrong i don't know man that one's fun though i wish the other guy would have been mad and thought about it for a day and a half i'm confused a little bit why like what he wanted what this new guy wanted what russell phyllis wanted I need to go back and relate to this episode, because I want to know what sent them the fuck off so hard. What I've noticed, and I don't know why. What? We used to post videos on YouTube, and they would get, like, 10 views. Like, nobody watched them. Like, they're just up there just in case, right? Like, we get way more downloads of the audio, but the videos were up there. But now, the last couple of months, every video we post gets hundreds of views. I mean, the time watched is still nothing, but... More bots clicking them to start I don't or something. Know, man. The F9 lap 14 has 2,500 views. Hobbs and Shaw has 1,000 views. Like, I don't understand why. Maybe it's bots. I've also, like, every day for the past, like, six weeks, maybe the same time frame. Maybe this is election traffic. Who knows? How to win the lottery and Cage Club. And not really too fast, unless they're just getting, all of a sudden, I'm seeing them. Like, once a day, sex bot follows them. Yeah, on you Twitter, were telling on me Twitter. about this. Yeah. Once a day, every day. Let me look up Vanishing Point. 46,000 views. Okay. 102 likes, but that's only 44% of the overall likes and dislikes. So like 102 up, basically like 120 down. I love that this did numbers. I remember when our like our like most popular movie was Tokyo Drift. Mm-hmm. Everybody was mad that wasn't just the movie. Right now, it's Tokyo Drift, Into the Blue, Machete Kills, Herbie Fully Loaded, Fast and Furious Spy Racers, Brick Mansions, and then Two Lane Blacktop, Vanishing Point, Hollywood Nights, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. Like, there's four in a row that just, like, 
These are the boomers. They're here. So we have a couple other emails to read. We have two from Patreon. Number one, Randy, who we talked to last week about the Randy cut, commented on a post. L flashback, definitely in chronological order in the Supercut. Everything is in chronological order in the Supercut. You heard more about that last week just reading the comic because we talked about it there. But then Joe, very special, very exciting. Alex Walsh, what? new $5 member, joined the Patreon. So shout out to Alex Walsh. And now, well, thank with that you, mind, Alex. We, d- how many Alexes do we have now? Well, count them. I'm going to read it again because we got a new one. Cassie Wilson, Nick Burris, Alex Ellenin, one. Yep. Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Party, Wes Hampton, yep. Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden Renato Di Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, Tom Price, Mike Gallagher, Josh Buckley of Whole Lot of Wolves, Michael Moser, Christian Larson, Tara New One, Aaron Willows, and Natalie Absolute, Randy Carter, Josh Goularm, Alex Walsh, and Jessica Collins, aka Mon Montez. It was only two. Okay. I was imagining was two. more. Alex has been writing in. Alex is the one doing lap by lap. I think Alex also. Yep has an email in this episode cool but we'll get to that email last because i have a couple other emails first but alex thank you so much stickers and note thank in the you, mail alex. on the way to you now appreciate you bud thank you thank you all right we've got two emails from john livingston who i think the more i read this i think is just the character from red dead redemption because his picture is also from red dead redemption i think but okay john livingston sends two emails before we get there because those are longer this is the one i was looking for one line from jackie jones Jackie has written in about the book of essays that we covered. Yes. Jackie simply wants to know, is Vin Diesel A-list? Oh, that is a tough. I would say yes. I would say that the Fast and the Furious is a big enough franchise between that and Riddick and Saving Private Ryan and how internationally recognized he is. I would say he is A-list. I don't think that he's like top tier celebrity I think there's like an S tier above him that's like Clooney, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. Like those kind of guys are probably like a tier above. But I think, yeah, he's A list. In the Who Weekly of it all, there's who's and them's. Who's and them's. a them is someone who everybody recognizes, and them is basically A list. And people know Vin Diesel. They might not have seen a Fast and Furious movie. But they know him as Fast and Furious. They know him as Groot, maybe. They know him as any number of things. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, my grandma, if my grandma was alive, she would know who Vin Diesel is by him doing promo on either the morning show or, like, the, like, Letterman. You know what I mean? Like, he would be known. Also, the fact that his name is Vin Diesel. A moniker, yeah. Only helps his fame. Agreed. So yes, I think the A list versus B list, like whatever, like all of that. Like I, I think, I think A list is probably very big. I would say absolutely. Is he a get for an interview? Is if he walks up to a club, will they let him in? Like yes, like he's just he's known. all these a he's restaurant. Celebrity. He doesn't need a reservation. They're gonna seat him. Like right. yes, agreed on all these parts. Yep, a hundred percent. Okay, John Levin sends two emails. First off, thoughts on the franchise as a whole. Hey Joey and Joe too. Hope you're well. It's been a while. I've managed to listen to your recent F9 episode with Kim and Walt. It's a really Ooh. good episode with great guests. Loved hearing their perspective on the franchise. Yeah, they're the best. I love those two dudes. In the episode, there was a question on why people seem to hate the franchise. I want to share my thoughts with you. And I saw many comments as well on my social media platforms. Initially, I thought they were just hating because the franchise was succeeding and manages to come out on top, beating other movies with large fan bases. However, after reading a few articles... I, on themes in the saga, I began to see things differently. A huge theme is the blue-collar aspect of the saga, heroes coming from a humble background, as does the franchise. Okay, yeah. Compare this to every other hero in other blockbusters who have white-collar jobs like spy, billionaire, superheroes who are special, military, police, badasses. The Fast Saga's heroes are the opposite of that, so when I see comments like, how come a bunch of street thugs and gangbangers can do this super awesome stuff saving the world, which is rightfully reserved for white-collar heroes like James Bond and Mission Impossible, it's jealousy and envy, and our heroes use their blue-collar vehicles to take down military choppers, drones and subs, and elite forces only boils their blood more. They seem to be perfectly fine with other heroes doing the same thing. However, it's a problem when Fast Saga does it. It's somebody looking inward, and they're saying, if these guys can be superheroes, why am I so lame? When is you what point your theory is. one out, yeah. it's three-point right back at you. 
Exactly. Look I in the also mirror, bud. Think in this we didn't really talk about this. We've talked about this before. I think the way that John is saying without saying racism. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Partly that too. There's a lot of brown people. There's a lot of brown people in these movies that are that are. Why cool? are brown and black people saving the world? Why isn't it? Why are they know, cool? a white British guy? Why are they friendly? Mm-hmm. Why is it not a white guy? Why are they with beautiful women? Although not really in this franchise as much as we've talked about, pretty asexual, but still. Yes, agreed. Good point. Yeah. I watch an A-Team movie clip on YouTube, and the comment section is plagued with people seething on the Fast Saga, repeating some comments like, how come cool military badasses get one failed movie and street thugs and criminals get nine movies? These stay in your lane energy type comments like, go back to being street racers and thugs, <laughs> these spy and action stuff belongs to us, you don't get to play in our ground and win, are so what? many, and it only goes back to the themes of the saga, which are pr- proudly wears on sleep. Also, as we found out in every one of these episodes... YouTube is filled with old white boomers. It makes sense that there's hate in those comments. 110%. They want, and much as we learned with just the, the landscape of media, they apparently just want nostalgic shit from the 70s regurgitated back to them at all times. Yes. Hence the RoboCop show on Amazon. Also, John says, all the main actors and directors are self-made and not the standard actor or actress director types. No already famous people worked on the franchise. Instead, people who worked on the saga became more famous, except for the later cast members. Glad they clarified there at the end. Good point. Yeah. Once five rolls around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlize is not. Helen Mirren didn't get more famous. Charlize is not. Helen Mirren is not. Stephen is not. But he's right. When we started up until about five, you're right, Joey. You're right. that, That, yeah. Even Gal Gadot, you know, superhero now, like literal superhero, Wonder Woman, world known, A list. Going back to the previous conversation, first movie, right? Just yes, like somebody's yeah. got to start here. In fact, we fans, John writes, don't celebrate the franchise enough for its accomplishments online as much as we do in the real world. The Fast Saga has laser focused, tight continuity between their films. Gonna disagree with you there. And henceforth, <laughs> raise the bar in sequels in general itself in the industry. Bigger impact than James Cameron. Also, not sure I believe that, but I love I love the sentiment. <laughs> I love this energy. This energy's hot. I like it. So big that other tra- franchise, for other franchises try to follow. The Fast Saga has zero recasting of their actors for 23 years of child actors. Good point. True. Franchises like the MCU are trying hard to do the same and even bringing pre-MCU actors back to stay relevant. Unless there's a huge mishap from the saga itself, we fans don't need to take the petty hate comments to our heads and instead celebrate more publicly online like you guys do. Thank anyway, you. I learned not to worry about the hate comments and started having more fun on people seething and the ringing endorsement from Chris Nolan many times helped seal the deal. I hope I didn't bore you with the long comments. This is something no. I've been observing for a long time and want to share when the time was right with my closest online fast fam, which is you guys. Let me know what you think of my take. End of rant. Take care, guys. And we'll tune in for the Fast 10 episode by John. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, John. That, yeah, that was fun. Um, I also would just like to make a general PSA after reading what John said at the end there. And that's a rule that I think all of us should instate. And I've said it a bajillion times. uh, Don't argue with morons on the internet. Just in general. Like, don't listen to anything a moron says on the internet. There's a lot of morons. They all think that they have valid points that need to be shared. They don't. It's just a new world where people get to say dumb shit out loud. So when I see, like, hate for example, hateful comments on the Fast and Furious franchise, I'm like, cool, and keep it pushing. I don't argue, don't give them your time, don't give them your any headspace. Just cool, and keep it pushing. Life's a lot better like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was talking about like people who just like very mad at like how to win the lottery comments too. It's just like wh- like why are you wasting your whatever. Well, you didn't put a spoiler alert in an episode that had a spoiler alert but about a book that was easy to read. If but is we're it... talking to an... Okay, so we post back-to-back episodes, <laughs> one about the book, one about an interview with the author of that book. Why would you be mad that there's spoil... Mm. What are you... I want to know what you're going to talk to an author about when you have him on to discuss a book. When it says, interview with B.R. Yeager, parentheses, author of Amigdala Latropolis. Why did you spoil the book that I'm currently in the middle of reading, but somehow, for some reason, stopping reading to watch an hour-long interview? Whatever, man. Okay. John emails again, Vin and Universal. 
What's up, Just again, a quick John? observation. Did Marvel get scared that Vin might actually pick up Robert Downey Jr. for Fast 11 like he did with Brie Larson for 10, oh. even though she was cast after production had begun? We don't know what RDJ would have said if Vin asked him, but could it be that Marvel knows Vin has the power to cast actors even after production started, so they quickly made the move to pay an insane amount to get RDJ back to Marvel? I don't know if we're at this level of like sports team poaching yet. I, I'm sure somebody thought about it, but was Art like was Robert Downey Jr. like on the short list? Like, do we have any? I don't. I don't. I don't know. think. I think it's just he was kind of out there, and he's a big franchise guy, and and it would make sense logically. I get you, but I don't. I don't think that that was ever like anything that we thought was going to happen. I think Marvel did it because they don't have a plan, and their plan was built around a guy who got canceled for being an abusive piece of shit, and they're like, oh no, what do we do now? Let's bring back the guy that people love. Yeah, and instead of them being like, hey, why don't we stop making these movies, Get a they're like, we need to make six more of these movies this year, so... Mm -hmm. John says, also, was Universal planning to phase out Vin in the future of the Fast Saga after Paul tragically passed him away passed away, and replace him with The Rock? It seems evident how The Rock was able to get a spinoff so quickly and efficiently with Chris Morgan. I don't necessarily think it was them trying to replace Vin. I just think it was the star power of The Rock and them trying to capitalize on The Rock's stardom and make more money. Because it all comes down to make the most money in my head. So I can't see them trying to box out Vin no matter what because he's making the money. So they can't hate him that much, right? I think it's just like what's good for one is good for all. And if we can make 10 movies, it's the Marvel thing, right? Like what you were just saying. Exactly. If they can make 10 movies, one with The Rock, one with like a several one with Statham, one with Han, one with whatever, like all, whatever, right? And they're all successful. Even if Vin's not in all of them, he's going to be a producer. He's going to make money. They're, like the main movies are going to make more money. That so yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't think it's necessarily cutting out the rock. And you're absolutely right. Yep. And like, yeah, I think that's what it is. I don't think that the the Hobbs and Shaw coming out and being the only spinoff has any indication of that in my head. It seems Vin also knows this. John says and keeps saying publicly in every premiere that new fast movies will lead to a trilogy since Fate, and keeps on setting up for upcoming movies so the audience will pressure Universal to make more. Is Vin holding Universal hostage for what they try to do to him? What do you think? I don't think they're holding him hostage. And I also think that his brain is just broken in the, the Walt sense of the writing a campaign. I think he's always thinking about Fast yes. and the Furious, that he always has ideas, and that every time he has an idea, he's like, oh, man, this would be make a great like trilogy saga, because it's just how he thinks. And as we learned from Mike, third time's a charm. So I think that it's more that Vin just probably comes in and is like, I have an idea for a movie. It's Fast and Furious, and like, this is where we're going to go for the next six of them. And you're like, we don't know if we're making six, Vin. And he's like, it needs to be six, at least six. And you're like, whatever, dude. I don't know. The last thing in this email is also something we mentioned in the Discord. He says, caught up in the Fast 10 episode. Great episode again. Loved Walt's Loved Kim's wrestling moment. A kind of correction on Joe 2's naming of Helen Mirren's character. It's not Madeline Shaw. It's Magdalene Shaw, as shown in the hit list in Fast okay. 10. Thank you for the episodes and discussion. We'll tune in for upcoming episodes. Bye. Well, thank you, John. Yeah, we were talking about like if, if his girlfriend, if, if Shaw's mom and his girlfriend are the same, but it's Madame Mem. Who knows? But yeah. Names, as we know from 4, where they don't even name Gal Gadot's character other than on screen the entire movie. Movie doesn't give a shit what women's characters names are just like they don't give a shit what rico and tego's name were until like a movie ago you mean leo and santo yes alex walsh writes in lap 10 your seat belts hey guys i'm running this from a hotel room in indiana in route to my new home moving sucks but it's almost over glad it's almost over but hope you hope you're traveling safe and you're settled nicely I don't have a hook from a minute this time, but instead of BD, Wafi caught me. There was one where someone commented how the characters in Tokyo Drift should have made more use of Tokyo's robust public transit system. It got me thinking of how we see transit in the series, kind of appropriately for a car-centric series. Whenever we see a character ride a bus or train, it's an emotional low point. It is, yeah. Sean rides a train in Tokyo Drift once after arriving in Tokyo, the music's upbeat, but he's been shipped halfway around the world. His father forgot, maybe, question mark, to pick him up, and there wasn't even he wasn't even there when he woke up. Can't feel great. The second time is with Neela right before they see Han die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that very downtrodden one. 
Brian and Mia ride the train in the lead up to the first heist in five. They're on the run, don't know where Dom is, and have just been pressured into taking a really shady gig because of how desperate they are for money. Shitty call, O'Connor. Shitty call. Although that seems cute, like, they're like, no extradition, right? There's, there's, I think there's some optimism in that scene. But the train itself is a depressing thing. Sure. Them being on the train, it does feel out of character, so. Yes. Because they're they don't have the control, right? They're like they're yeah. You're you're at the hands of another driver. In six, Han and Roman get their asses kicked in the station, which is bad enough. But they never actually get on the train. The one who does is Letty, who at this point is an amnesiac, starting to realize she's being manipulated. The only character who rides a bus is Dom when he's being sent to prison. I don't count the cliff scene in seven as Brian riding a bus. Yeah, fair enough. I don't either. Really rough representation for us train fans, right, Alex? Well. Alex, you I know you're not listening to these episodes, but you got a whole lap full of control rooms and trains. Oh, I hope you're so excited because Joey loved it. But it does feel pretty correct. That the worst thing that can happen to the family is having to be a passenger. Also in this lap was the announcement of Jason Momoa's casting for 10. One of my that's wild. Cool. Back in time. One of my friends always likes to tell people he's the same height and weight as Momoa, conveniently leaving out several other extremely important metrics. So enjoyed hearing you compare his numbers to The Rock and John Cena. Ah, nice. It's like, same you know, height and weight as. I'm also 6'1, 200 pounds. It's like, yeah, but you're not like cornerback 200 pounds. You're like, yeah, couch you're like 200 fat pounds. dude 200 pounds. <laughs> Beer belly 200 pounds. Really like the format change of this lap, phasing out the full list of either-or questions at the beginning. I think they worked well spaced out in the lap with a consistent guest, but having them all, plus the character quiz every episode was a lot. I appreciate you were willing to shake up the format to get more time in for discussion with the guests, although I do enjoy when you occasionally bring back the distraction karaoke question. It's always fun to hear those. We're changing those all the time. It's, you know, it's keeping, keeping your toes. We're flowing. We're flowing. We're going to change it again. We got some new ideas. Everything's just trying to make it more palatable. Last note on the relap recap, Joey said there were not a lot of baseball fans in the audience. You'll appreciate that one of the things I'm excited about with this move is getting back to a baseball town. According to Google Maps, I'll be seven minutes by bike from the Great American Ballpark. I was only Which one's six Great minutes American? Cincinnati. Okay, cool. Nice. Cool stadium, I've been there. I was only six minutes from PNC in my last place in Pittsburgh, so this is a slightly longer trip by a minute. By a minute, But I yeah. think I can deal with it. I just wish the Mets were coming out here sooner than next September, dot, 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 while we're recording on a good day for the Mets. Anyway, time to get to Did they win the sleep. second game? How's, how's uh, the it doesn't matter, game? but they made the playoffs after the first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, time to get sleep so I can get on the road early tomorrow. Got to dig into lap 11 on the final leg of the trip later, gang Alex. Well, thank you, Alex, and also thank you once again for joining the Patreon. Thank you once again, and um, I'm glad that we're helping you f- get get your move along. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we're a little reprieved from the stress of moving and stuff like that, and hopefully you're settled and happy and healthy. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, We have a store, kcode.me slash shop. Do that. If you haven't left a review on Apple Podcasts, please do that. That helps something, although I feel like by this point, you know, people who found us are going to find us. But, you know, if you want to go do that, Apple Podcasts, leave a review. Joe, extracurricular activities. We talked last episode about you coming down to watch the Randy Cut with me, but what else have you been up to in the last three weeks? Nothing super much. I'm getting ready to to travel stuff soon. But this weekend, um, I had my mom come visit. Very cool. And we went to the Big E on Friday, which we talked about on here before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Got to eat all kinds of cool things, which was fun. Um, got to hang out with her. Then Saturday we went, oh, Saturday we had like a weird day. So, uh, one of the, like one of the guys I know from work is in an Irish band and I was like, oh, I'll come to your next show. And like when he was like, okay, so he was playing like last Saturday, not like the most recent last Saturday, but the Saturday before that. And I was like, oh, well, what time do you play? And he's like something like Four, like five to seven or something and i was like oh sorry like you know the steelers game was at four that was the time we were playing the chargers so i was like I'm, i want to watch that instead he's like no big deal i'll tell you about the next one and it was at like the irish american club like an old white man club mm-hmm. so i took my mom and rachel and we went and we were like sitting at this irish american club listening to the irish band and it's like have you ever been to one of these joey like an elks or a moose or something did we talk about this before i feel like no we did. i i mean i i know what you're talking i know i know what you're like describing it's like a pool hall like yeah. you know what i mean knights of columbus any of these things right fire firefighters whatever we were there we had a great time it was awesome to see them uh had a couple drinks and that was fun that was it watched football on sunday uh took my mom to the airport this morning and so she's home and safe now and 
yeah, it was good. It was just nice to see see her for a weekend. It was. And then you and Rachel were like a movie tear last episode. Have you guys seen oh. anything else recently? No, 100%. We actually, we were on a prequel weekend with my mom. A prequel we watched, weekend? It seemed it, unintentionally. We watched uh, the first Omen. Okay. Oh, the new one. I've not seen, I've not seen any Omen, including, I'm going to see the new one, I think, this year sometime, but I will try. Yes, we did watched you like that. it? It was, it was good, but the problem was, the night beforehand, we had watched Apartment 7A, which was the Rosemary's Baby prequel. Which I will see, but I'm not excited for. Is that good? We had a ton of fun. Really? I don't know if you liked if you're gonna like it or not. Have you seen you've seen Rosemary's Baby, right? Yeah. And Rosemary's Baby is also like Margaret's favorite movie. So like I think she's gonna hate this, but I don't it's know. It's fun. It's fun. It's memorable. It, it makes some interesting twist choices. Like I mean, I like Julia Garner a lot, who plays who's the main character. We had actress. a great time. Uh we woke up the next morning, my mom was like, I can't stop thinking about that damn movie. And I was like, Yeah, same, dude. It was okay. actually like really cool. Um the thing was is the first omen somehow turned out to be a lot like rosemary's baby as well somehow so it kind of felt like we were watching well, I mean, the same movie like, spoilers giving birth to satan they are mm-hmm. but i mean it was like almost one to one when we watched it the next day so it was kind of weird um what else have we been watching shitty tv still uh the floor is back highly recommend the floor we mentioned it in the discord top tier uh fun time trivia show i explained it at one point mm-hmm. you like have a special category and people challenge yes. you and then you try to like uh you know take over conquer the floor and then if i conquer you then i get your category too is that that one yeah yeah, yeah. if you challenge them you uh, assume their category afterwards and yeah blah 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 blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah uh fun 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 uh but that was pretty much it Ben. like uh nothing super crazy i'm gonna have like a nice rest week this week that i'm really cool. excited about and what about you bud what have you been up to i think a lot and i was waiting to hear it we did the randy cut we did margaret's birthday weekend which uh i won't talk too much about but i she loves the movie breakfast at tiffany's and she did not know that you could have breakfast at tiffany's so i brought her there and she was very excited that was also like did delicious. it go did it go good yeah uh, i was uh, she had awesome she cool. loved the day, so that cool, was great. Good. But I, I'm not a big tea guy because I don't really like hot drinks. I prefer cold drinks, and this was like the best tea I've ever had. I'm like, do you sell this? He's like, no. I was like, oh, I mean, like you could make so much money if they sold like, you know, fifty dollar box or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had, like the Tiffany. What tea, kind of tea was it? Do you know Earl Grey? It was a black tea, and black tea. it tasted. It had like notes of like blueberry in there, which was oh fun. Okay, really nice, good. Really, awesome, really good, cool. Tea can be very good tea can be very it's like i drink a ton of iced tea all the time but i mean also like exotic weird teas herbal yeah. teas can yeah. all be very good yeah uh we're recording this a little bit early because when this episode when we would normally record this episode when it's out for patrons margaret and i will be in europe so i'll talk about that on the next fast lane next lap but that's exciting we're gonna go there for a week or so a little bit over a week which is very exciting other than that i've seen the only real thing that I've done of note outside my house, other than watching the Vikings at home go four now, which is very congratulations, exciting. sir. Thank you, Sam Darnold MVP. Is I saw three, I think, movies in theaters. Number one, I saw The Substance, which is the new horror movie, body horror movie with Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley. Loved it. Okay, cool, interesting. Second favorite movie of the year behind The Beast. Okay. It's so gross and so over the top. It's made by this French woman, Coralie Fargiat, and she did the movie Revenge, which I loved a handful of years ago, and she came back with this, and it's amazing, and it's so gross and so over the top and just nasty, and I loved it, and like okay. everyone's going crazy for it. Chris Podcast has been texting me about it. Very, very good. I also saw, it's an older movie, but it's from the 70s. There's a Japanese movie, House, which I'm sure you have seen. Have you seen the movie House or no? No. Not that I know of. Why? It's just, it's very good. I mean, you've, you've probably, I would imagine, seen, like, art from it. Like, if you look, like, this is, like, the cat on the front cover. Like, it's a Criterion movie, but it's just, like, super weird and super stylized. Racer Trash waved it. Okay. They did Beach House music. They call it Beach House. It's all Beach House music set to house. Ah, makes sense. Um, at the Princeton Gardens Theater in Princeton, um, they do, they have, like, a bunch of different series, and they have one called My Favorite Film, and they just have, like, a staff member show their favorite movie and talk about it and so this was somebody's favorite movie and like it was like a packed audience and it's so crazy and it's like kind of horror kind of fantasy kind of comedy kind of drama it's really special and unique and it was very cool to see that in the big screen so i saw that it was cool very cool and then the most important movie i saw megalopolis francis ford coppola's megalopolis which i am waiting 
desperately to hear from Mike and Brian about. It came out as we were recording this last Thursday. There was an IMAX special event the Monday before. Because at the IMAX in New York at Lincoln Center, which is like they have a bunch of like, like that's like the, like the flagship AMC. They okay. had Francis Ford Coppola there. They also had De Niro and Spike Lee. And they did like a half hour conversation before the movie. Spoiler free, not really about the movie that much. Um, and so they broadcast that to like 60 different AMCs in, in the US and Canada. Then we watched the movie. And so I just like woke up on Monday. I was like, oh, I'm going to go see it on Thursday night with Bob. And then I was like, oh, I can see it tonight. And there's this thing. And I saw it. And the the sentiment online, I think, is right. Like my entire Twitter feed, the For You section, is just Megalopolis. Because like okay. the, the way the algorithm like it, the way the algorithm works now, it's like, oh, you liked one tweet about this. Do you want to see 70,000 tweets? tweets about this? Yeah. But the sentiment is I don't know if it's good. I don't think it's good, but it's fun. Also, no one saw this movie. Like, it made $5 million. He self-financed a $120 million budget, and it made $5 million in his opening weekend. But if you look at my Twitter, everyone in the world is talking about this movie, but nobody saw it. You know what I mean? Because it's like the weird amplification of, like, some voices. Yes. Natalie Emanuel is one of the leads. Ramsey herself, one of the leads. Shia's in it. They talked about the opening about... Kaya, my girlfriend no, Kaya? Shia, uh, okay. my boyfriend. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Not really, but former podcast. Mike and I did all his movies. Yeah. Again, it's not good. It's really fun. At one point, and this has been known since like it premiered at Cannes, the screen goes from being like a full screen to like a six, like a Zoom. Like imagine like a Zoom window with like six people, right? Like a, a three by two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And five of them go black, and it's just Adam Driver at the bottom. And there is someone literally in the theater with a microphone who the theater light spotlights on this person in the auditorium of the theater. And he asks Adam Driver a question and Adam Driver answers it. And so it's clearly it's scripted because it's just the same answer every time. But I read a thing that said Francis Ford Coppola years ago had Amazon working on AI that would let Adam Driver's character answer any question that was asked, and then Amazon Interesting. fire the entire team and it didn't happen. But I'm like, you can't do, like, mixed media. Like, like you can't watch this at home. Like, how do you do it when it's at home? Then it just, it's easier at home than it is in the theater, to be I've honest. I've never seen something like this where it's like, it's like a performance. It's so weird. That is very, very sure. It's like breaking the fifth wall. You know what I mean? You're like, you can talk to the movie at this point. Yeah. Also, I know exactly why Amazon didn't did that didn't do that because I think somebody had the foresight to be like a lot of these questions are gonna be like, Who is the master race? Well, yeah, maybe You know what I mean? In yeah. theaters, like and you're like, Yeah, let's not have Adam Driver AI answering. I also do think questions. most questions would be like, What is this movie about? Oh, that's fun what, too. Yeah. What does any? What do any of these characters actually want? Like, do you die in the end of this? You know, like so he's like, yes, yes, I do die in the end of this. You know? Like the main thrust of Mike and Brian's podcast, Uncle Francis's Wine Cellar, is that Francis Ford Coppola will not stop editing his own movies. There's the TV cut of The Godfather. There's like four versions of Apocalypse Now. He's re-released like two or three of his movies since they started the podcast. He re-released The Godfather 3, The Coda. Like, everything he's done, he keeps re-editing. And it feels like there's a four-hour version of this movie. Like, there's going to be another Megalopolis. The fact that it's in theaters at all feels like a miracle that he, like, paid his way in. But it's like, we're not going to show a four-hour movie. You can make, like, a two-hour, 20-minute version we'll show. It's just, like, there's so much here that just doesn't really make sense that I want to see more. Okay. But I would say, even though I can't really say it's good... It's worth watching. I think you need to see it, and I think you need to see it in theaters. Like, I love ambition, and I love big swings, and this is one of the biggest. And he, like, didn't really make contact at all, but (laughs) there's a lot going on. Like, it's like he took, like, 12 swings at one pitch, and, like, one of them's, like, a triple. And the others are, like, (laughs) either swings and misses or, like, pop-ups. It's just, like, there's some really good stuff in there. Like, Aubrey Plaza plays a character named Wow Platinum. Her name is Wow Platinum. That's amazing. That's a, that's a top tier name. One of the actresses flubs one of her lines and that's in the it's just kept in the movie like they just didn't edit it out like they just, the, the take they use has her like stumbling over her words. It's like 
I don't know. It's That's a so, choice. It's so weird. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm glad it was what it was. So this is going to be out in a while. I, it might be gone by in, from theaters by the time this comes out in like a week and a half. I, I, I don't know. But if you've not seen it in theaters, I know Jason Rainey saw it. Go see it. Because, boy, it's it's a thing. Okay. It's an experience. I would say with Rachel, like, go on, like, a Tuesday, like, you know, pay half price or whatever, because, like, you're going to be alone. Rachel will be the only woman there, because, like, it's, like, 90% dudes. Like, there was, I saw a thing on Twitter, of course, because, you know, where it's, like, on the AMC app, it's, like, almost full or whatever. And then, like, instead of almost full, it just said all male. It's, like, who's going to the 10 p.m. all male showing? And people, like, every showing is the all male show. Like, just there's nobody. There's no women. It's just, like, this is a movie for 40-year-old dudes. Why is there an all male showing of... It's not. It's just like a meme. Like it's it's oh, or okay. it's like a, it's like a Photoshop. But it's there's no like no women go to this. Yeah, true. It's like people who go there with their. Although I sat next to a woman in her sixties who let out a big smelly chicken finger burp in the middle of the movie, and I was just like, "Lady, what are you doing?" Like she was That's eating chicken insane. fingers, which smelled good, and then she just burped. That's insane. And I just smelled chicken fingers. I'm like, ugh, oh, yeah, gross. The grossest. That's about all I think. Um, oh, I've been playing Neon White, which is a video game, which is great. Uh, I finished the story. It's like a speedrunning game where you pick up cards that are guns. Like, each card has a different kind of gun, but you can also discard the card to do a thing. Like, it's like, the first one's like a pistol, where you can discard it to, like, do an extra jump. So it's like, do you want to, like, the, the speed Keep your level, pistol. you have to, like, shoot and then, like, discard at the right time to jump to get to another part, to get another gun, to then, like, zoom ahead or stomp down or fireball up or whatever. Fun. It's so cool. So, cool. Yeah, it's that's great. fun. But again, Europe coming up soon. We'll talk about it on the next episode. Joe, any other final thoughts in extracurricular activities? No, I hope everybody's having a wonderful start to fall. And I'm excited for fall to be here, too. Well, the only thing left in this episode we need is we need an episode title. It has to be like trash and then the trash can emoji from one of the comments. Oh, rubbish. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Or what was it? Axioms of. Oh, the Vin one? Yeah. For the last 11 years, I've held words like talismans of light. Each have gifted me so much with their love and wisdom. Talismans of light or rubbish trash can emoji. Those are my two front runners. I could be swayed to something else, but those are those are what I'm thinking right now. We could just do talismans of rubbish. <laughs> trash can emoji. <laughs> yes, 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 that's it. I'm, I'm very curious if like putting an emoji in the episode title is going to break distribution. I, that's why I want to try it. We've never done it, I don't think, right? So talismans of rubbish, trash can emoji. Okay. Because that's what you said, right? Like he put a trash can emoji. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. And if you don't hear this, you know, your your podcast feed does not like emojis. In its RSS feed titles. Yeah. We'll find out. Anyway. We'll find out soon. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for supporting. Thank you, Thank Alex, you for, for joining, joining the family. Yeah. Our next episode next week is the tune-up. We're going to be talking to Walt and Kim about their lap. We're going to be talking to Josh and Mike about their picks, and hopefully we did them justice. Announcing the next theme and more secrets, more surprises next week. The tune-up. Lap 15 officially starts the first week in November. We've got one more episode after the tune-up to do in this lap. Unprecedented. Yep. Tune-up always ends. This one? No? Still one more? Yeah. But for all things Too Fast Too Forever, go to cageclub.me, facebook.com slash Too Fast Too Forever, or at Too Fast Too Forever on all the socials. Email us, family at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at Too Fast Too Forever.com and our store at cageclub.me slash shop. And come back next week for the Tune Up Relap Recap. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too. And we will tell you all about it when we see you again.